What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode four of my Wealth Journey series. And this series is largely based on my book, The Wealth Journey, which is right here. You can check it out in the description if you have not read it yet. And I just want to take the time to point out real quick that it has been a while since I've made a video on YouTube. And I know I just posted episode three a few days ago, but between posting episode three and everything else, it has been like two months since I posted. So now I have a few months, including June, that I wanna catch you all up on when it comes to my net worth because I've still been tracking that. Um, quick disclaimer, this is not financial advice. This is purely what I've done to build my net worth. And um, I do wanna say, if you want to pick up my spreadsheets to track your net worth or to make savings goals, feel free to click the links in the description and they will be yours. And I think you'll notice something very interesting as I go over my net worth. So we're not gonna waste any time. We're gonna jump straight into it right now. We're gonna break down the month of April right now. If you see me look down, I'm just looking at my phone. So for the month of April, I had $2,780 in my checking account and $1,373 in my savings. I do make mistakes every now and then. So if you remember from the last video, I had $1,951. I bit off way more than I could chew. And I didn't realize that in, in the zeal of me trying to go for my goal of hitting 2000 as quickly as possible, my savings account, I did forget about some expenses that just inevitably pop up, even though I'm tracking everything. Sometimes I might slack and forget that something's going to pop up. So that's all that was just me taking some money out of my savings account, my regular savings account, not my emergency fund, but taking it out of my regular savings account and paying for those expenses. And then also I moved some extra money from my savings account to add as a bigger buffer for my checking account. Because I don't know about you, but at the beginning of every month, that's when my biggest bills come in. And ironically, so I don't have to rely on taking money from my savings account, I build a buffer anyway. So when I see that buffer get below a certain threshold, I'm throwing money back in there. I'm trying to get out of that habit. Uh, it, it just didn't work out on that particular month. But I just wanted to be completely transparent with you. I make mistakes all the time. Just because I give financial advice does not mean that my financial picture is perfect. Just want y'all to know that. Anyway, jumping into the emergency fund, that is something that continues and will continue to go up every single month um, until I decide to go heavy on investments. But for the month of April, I had $7,271 by the end of that month, which, you know, I'm just putting $500 in there and then it continues to grow based off the percentage that that account is growing, which at this time is 4.4%. So just so we're keeping track, because I really want you to pay attention to the month of April specifically, because you'll see that my net worth actually takes a dip down, which I did say in my last video, my goal is for my net worth to always go up, but I do understand the way that investments and money work. Sometimes you're gonna have fluctuation. This is exactly what I'm talking about. So, so far, the two numbers that have gone up is my checking account and my emergency fund. But my savings went down like a lot. That was due to my own fault, my own inattention. But check this out. So with my first 401k account, which is with Empower, which is through Vanguard, it ended up with $17,773. That is a, that's quite a difference between April and March, because in March I had $18,234. So that specific account took a hit. And even my 401k that I have currently with Fidelity, it had $74,415 at the end of April, but in March it had $75,199. So I most definitely took a loss on that, but that's just how the game works when it comes to investing. Nothing substantial, but definitely enough to catch my attention. So then the Roth IRA, the Roth IRA actually did go up since March, but <clears throat> the Roth IRA was $6,738, which was quite an improvement from March, which was $6,377. And my Weeble account, my favorite account ever, it will probably always be my favorite account, $25,580 at the end of April. But compared to March, March had $26,598. So I took over a $1,000 hit in my Weeble account. If you're someone who watches this channel and you follow my investing content as well, you would probably agree with me in saying that April was a fine time to invest because the market as a whole took a dip at that time. And my crypto account even took a dip. As it was $567 at the end of April compared to March, it was $632. Uh, 
I'm not that big on crypto, not that big a deal, but I'm just holding on to it. I'm not adding any extra to it right now. I'm just focused really on my my big priorities, which is investing in stocks, investing in my Roth IRA, and investing in my 401k. So it is what it is. Life insurance inevitably every month has been going up. That's what it's supposed to do. That's what I'm paying for it to do. So it's going to always increase. It ended up being $1,837. And it went up quite a bit from 1757, which is where it was at in March. So my assets came up to 138,335 for the month of April, which was a little bit lower than what I had in March. In March, I had $140,002. And so when you subtract that from my liabilities, which at the time in April, it was just you know, student loans, which is going, it's going to stay that way, as well as a little bit of credit card debt, like $32, nothing big. But student loans ended up being $23,870. i am taking my sweet time with that. I already explained the concept and why I think like that in my previous video. But as you can see, my investments have grown and matured to a point where they've made me a lot more money than me focusing all my time and attention on paying my debt down to completely zero. So I will continue to take my time on that and build my net worth in the meantime. But my assets minus my liabilities in the month of April ended up making my net worth out to $114,433, which was a step down from what it was in March, which was $115,994. I want to take a little bit of time right now to just tell you there's nothing wrong with your net worth dropping a little bit. It's, it's going to happen. Life is going to happen. And if life isn't happening, investments might rise and fall. I mean, Things like that are going to happen. So it's nothing to get discouraged about, but it's something to, to be aware of. And you can really look at why your net worth fell. Was it because of you or was it because of some circumstance that you couldn't control? You know, what what's the main reason? And you can really reflect and then look back at what you can do in the future to better your finances. But in the month of May, it bounced back. And when I say bounce back, it really, really bounced back. So let's talk about it. First of all, in May, I was about blessed with a bonus. In the last video, which was episode three, I talked about how I recently had gotten a raise and then boom, on top of that, the month of May, I got a bonus. And it was a nice bonus, a little too nice. I didn't really control myself as much as I probably should have, which you'll hear plenty about in my video that talks all about my spending and saving and investing and how much money went into those. But for now, we're just talking about the net worth. So let's talk about it. My checking at the end of May had $3,613. My savings had $2,006. So at that time I hit my goal, my emergency fund actually went down a little bit. So y'all will see, sometimes I do eat my words and that's okay because whenever I deviate from my plan, I get right back on track and I'm so hard on myself, y'all have no idea. So I get back on track and I, I keep it moving. But I want y'all to see my failures just as much as y'all see my success. So that's why I'm breaking everything down for you right here, right now. But here's the bounce back portion. You know what I'm saying. My 401k number one went to $18,418 at the end of the month of May, which was a step up, a big step up from 17,773. My 401k number two went to 78,132 and it had quite an improvement. So it went up just under $4,000, but uh, previously it was $74,415. Roth IRA, oh, my Roth IRA has not let me down once. $7,656 compared to what it was back in April was $6,738, so that went up. That went up a little over $900. My Weeble account just went crazy on this particular month. It went to $29,456, and I have not been adding anything to my Weeble account this whole year. I've really just been, like I've, I've said this before, but I've been focused on my Roth IRA and maxing that out, and I've been focused really on that and just building my emergency fund. I have not been adding anything to Weeble this year. It was previously 25580 but as you can see, it jumped up quite a bit. Crypto, it went back up a little bit uh, to $626, 
versus the 567 it was the previous month. And then the life insurance went to $1,916 versus the $1,837. So my assets ended up going to $149,024. For the month of May, I was pretty excited to see that. And if you remember, when I started first making this series, I specifically said that my goal was to have a net worth of $130,000 by the end of the year. You'll see by the end of the month of May, I am awfully close to that. So let's talk about that. We had a little bit of credit card debt and then student loans went down to 23,732. So it's going down every single month. I'm not worried about it. All I need to see about my student loans is that it's going down. And it is because I plan for my payments to make it go down at a certain rate. Credit card was $296. And a lot of that was because when I did get my bonus, I was like, oh, this is a great this is a great opportunity to buy some expensive things, but use my credit card for them and then pay off the credit card later and then get the credit card points and then get future things for free. And uh, that was my plan and it worked exactly in that way. I didn't regret that, but that did cause the month to end with 296 in credit card debt. And that's just because I don't make my credit card payments until the beginning of the next month. So my liabilities ended up being $24,028 with a net worth ending in $124,996 for the month of May. This is exactly why I said in episode three that look, I know my goal was $130,000 at the end of the year, but it might as well be $200,000 because there is word going out there saying that once you've hit your six figure net worth, your net worth starts to boom, just start really moving up very, very quickly. And this is how numbers work. This is why I tell all of you invest. I'm not saying I used to preach saving all the time. That was getting everybody financially stable, getting everybody in the right mindset. But that's because you have to be able to save in order to invest. But then right now, I'm talking about invest, invest, invest once you've got your savings under control because y'all can see these numbers multiplying every month. I'm not just saying this stuff. I have proof and these numbers are backing me up. And I'm telling you, investing is the way to go. Just my opinion now. So let's talk about the month of June. My checking account got somewhat back to normal, uh, $2,512 by the end of the month of June. By this time, I had already put my money where I was going to put it in terms of the, the bonus money that I got. So I did buy quite a few things. I bought a lot of boxing gloves. I bought three pairs of boxing gloves with this money. And boxing gloves ain't cheap, but um, I really, really enjoy the sport that I do, Muay Thai, that if you see this on my shirt. This is my gym right here, the gym that I go to. Anyway, I was looking at my savings and I was like, hmm, do I really need 2000 or do I want 1500 and put my money towards investments? I got a little bit indecisive in the month of June about it. I have decided that I'm going to go back to $2,000, but I'm going to do it the right way and I'm going to just do it incrementally every month because the big thing with my biggest problem isn't, you know, spending money on things that I don't need. My my biggest problem is deciding how much money I want to invest on a particular month to make it grow X amount in the future versus saving money and feeling a little more comfortable with what I have in my bank account. And that is the genuine issue. Um, but if I did have to say I had a spending problem in any particular category, it would definitely be DoorDash. Uh, in episode three, I got better. Uh, those two months that I took off of YouTube, ironically, I fell right back off. And now I'm back in a mindset of, okay, I'm getting sick of DoorDash. I'm about to be cooking all the time. So it's just, you know, personal finance. A lot of people don't talk about this. Personal finance in a lot of ways is a tug of war with you against yourself and your wants and your desires and your vices. And my vice happens to be food and over investing because I really like the returns I've been getting, and it's it's almost like being greedy in a sense. But I wouldn't use that word to describe me. I would just say that I'm hungry for success and I really want to see my money multiply. But sometimes I have to remind myself to press the brakes a little bit and, and really reevaluate what I'm doing and stick to the plan that I have set for myself. And if that plan is not working, changing said plan. So 
this video would probably be a lot smoother if I just made each video one at a time, you know, April, May, June, but I'm putting all three together because I made the decision to take a, a brief couple months off of YouTube. So I wanted to make sure y'all don't miss anything. And so I put all three months together. My emergency fund uh, for the month of June did end up going back to 7,700. I put the $500 right back in there just to correct something that I did the previous month, which we already talked about. So yeah, that went up. My 401k number one went up a little bit too. It went to $18,665. So just a couple hundred dollars. Um, my second 401k went up quite a bit though, $81,008, a little over $2,000. My Roth IRA went to $8,703. And just keep in mind, I'm, I'm putting $500 a month into my Roth IRA. I haven't increased that amount or anything at all. I've just been doing 500. Obviously to max it out, I do need to put a little more than $500 in it because the max to put in your Roth IRA, at least for my age group, is $7,000. But I just want this to be a testament to the growth of my Roth IRA. My Weeble account went to $32,866. It went absolutely crazy. And in my investing video, I specifically tell you what investments I'm in and everything, but one investment specifically has taken my Weeble account through the roof and that is NVIDIA. I've made so much money off of NVIDIA. I'm so mad at myself that I didn't buy more in 2022. But again, that's just me being hungry for success and you know, my account's doing well. So I need to be thankful for what I got. <clears throat> but it went from 29,456 in May to 32,866 in June. We're talking about a $3,400 gain in a month. That's not bad at all. I'm feeling good about that. My crypto went down again, but all my other investments went about up. So I didn't really think too much about the crypto going down, but it went down to $585 versus its previous $626. And my life insurance went to $1,951 versus the $1,916. So that left my assets. It's a total of $155,491 for the month of June. And in my liabilities, we just had student loans for this month. Uh, everything else was zero medical bills credit card zero. So $23,603 was how much I owed in student loans. And so when you subtract my liabilities from my assets, I was left with $131,888 for my total net worth. And that is my current net worth as of right now. And you will notice there is a green hue or green like highlight on, on the bottom where it says net worth 131,888, that is because I have programmed it to automatically highlight green the moment my net worth meets or exceeds $130,000. So, so my thoughts were correct a few months ago when I said, I think I'm gonna blow this out of the water way sooner than the end of the year. And that has been correct. So I'm 100% gonna aim for $200,000 as my net worth towards the end of the year. I want y'all to join me on this journey and root me on. And y'all, I want y'all to share y'all's net worth and y'all's insights and everything else too. It doesn't just have to be about what I'm doing, but the, but the main purpose of this series is to show you that all the advice that I've spent several hours and, and days and months and years creating, if you add all the time up together, all of this, is backing up the action that I have taken to build my net worth to what it is today because just a few years ago, and maybe I'll have to make a video about, about what it looked like to go from a $0 net worth all the way to 100,000 plus, and I'm still 28 at the time of recording this video. So who knows where my net worth is gonna be in just a few years from now, or even at the end of the year, and then, who knows how much further we can take this. So yes, there will be celebrations. There will be me happy about how my personal finance, my personal financial picture is looking, but there will also be dips and valleys. There will also be me making mistakes. I'm only human, but what I can say is 
I follow my own advice and I don't tailor my advice based on what other people said. I used to do that. Like if you go back five years in time, yeah, I definitely used to do that. But what I do now is I base my advice based off of my own experience and what works for me. Personal finance is personal. So I had to tailor it to fit me. And what I find is a lot of people in my age group, a lot of the advice that I'm giving and the things that I'm saying and the opinions that I have fit a lot of other people too. But I'm just glad that y'all tag along for the journey. I don't want to talk too much. There's plenty that we're going to be talking about in the in the coming weeks about my spending and about other advice that I have. And I'm going to make another move out video because for some reason, everybody loves that. I have a lot to say about it. I've, I've had to think a lot about that particular topic. And now that it's really heavy on my mind, I have some things I want to say to to that part of my audience as well. But until then, I will see y'all next time. Thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.